YouTube, Air of Carthage here, and I'm coming to you from the loading screen so you can see these armies from a high level. Because this battle is absolutely nuts. Like, I think you all saw the loading screen, but there's a couple of bloated corpses involved in this match, which is going to be pretty fun. A Death Shriek Terror Geist. There are Sartosa Militia, because this is Sartosa. And they are led by none other than the Queen of Salt herself. And she disappears, by the way. Trying to get my scroll speed set. Yeah, so here is RNS Assault Spite leading the free companies of Sartosa, the dual sword infantry. They actually do have a bonus versus infantry. And then this is some Sartosa free company. So, very interesting build to see here. There is a vampire fleet captain, Lore of Deep. Let's take a look at him just real quick. This is a tournament battle that was submitted. He's got Kraken's Pull, which slows down a unit, keeps it from running away, basically. Um, yeah, the Sartosa Free Company, not very impressive stats, but, you know, 26 attack and armor piercing, they'll be good against anything that's um, low armor. I mean, they're not a great unit overall, but low armor, they'll, they'll do well against it. The Sartosa Militia is kind of a decent melee combatant, as it says there. I mean, it's, they took the words right out of my mouth. I wouldn't say it's going to be good, but um, going to be kind of like a, an Empire Free Company Militia. Now, another interesting couple of units we have here, like I said, here's the Bloated Corpse. Uh, they are both hiding back in the woods, waiting for an opportunity. And uh, we've got some Carronades in the back. There is a Mortar as well. And then the Shade Wraith Gunners, which is a deck gunner. It's ethereal and has some special shots. Now, the Lizardman army has a few Skink Skirmishers, a bunch of Skink Cohorts, some Saurus Warriors, a backline of a couple of Spearmen and Temple Guard. A huge rush army, basically, probably hoping to overwhelm the Vampire Coast with numbers. But the Vampire Coast is already just on an absolute tear with their units. Look at the damage caused to these Skink Skirmishers. The Mortar has opened fire, the Shade Wraith Gunners have opened fire, and the Lizardmen are losing troops at a pretty rapid clip here. They're almost down a hundred Lizards. <laughs> And the fight hasn't even started. The Death Shriek Terror Geist is in a perfect position to be swooping down on stuff like this. Skink Cohort's out of position. It's going to insta-terror out. Now over here, a couple of Skink Cohorts do uh, reach into melee, but they're going to go up against the Sartosa Free Company, which is going to be pretty well suited to these types of fights. You can see the Bloated Corpse is held back in the woods, waiting for an opportunity to get in. A Temple Guard would be a juicy juicy target for a bloated corpse could it get to one a Saras warrior would be another very nice target if one could connect now Tehenowin's coming in and he's gonna summon a feral manticore and I was like ah he's gonna go after this death streak terrorgeist see if he can stop it right here and now because its leadership was wavering but the manticore comes in and just goes straight back here for the artillery the lizard player is desperate to get to the artillery and understandably so a lot of units blobbed up here i was like just wishing you could transport a bloated corpse out here just to see what it would do but it's not going to happen so the shade wraith gunners are going to get the attention of the manticore and the death streak terror geist is just kind of trying to pick off infantry the sartosa militia is getting engaged by saros warriors and then over here the skinks are going to reach the mortar skinks are very quick units and good at uh, getting around lines and trying to get to artillery while still being decent in melee against low armor foes. So, makes them pretty uh, versatile. The Star Chamber Guard has taken, definitely taken some hits throughout this. Sar Spears over here connecting with the Sartosa Militia, but look at all the extra units in the way that the uh, Vampire Coast is um, arrayed on the battlefield is definitely going to help them. That was the Bloated Corpse there, taking down most of a Saras unit. And then over here, I'll get you all some sweet bloated corpse action. Ooh. Right along there with Kraken's pull, so a couple of pretty decent uh, bloated corpse plays. I would have liked to have seen that one bloated corpse save for the Star Chamber guard. I think that it probably could have gotten to him, but still, not bad plays there, and so Sartosa just really dishing out some significant damage here. Tehenowin has taken a little damage in the fight. The Vampire Fleet Captain Lure of Deep is back here safe. The Death Shriek Terror Geist is actually about to die to Skink Skirmishers and a Feral Manticore. So the second Manticore 
does go in and help finish the Death Shriek Terror Geist. So this is looking rough for Sartosa with the loss of that Death Shriek Terror Geist. But they're trying to get back into it. The Free Company gonna outflank the Saurus. And look at this, then another quick moving skink unit managing to get through the Carinade. Kraken's pull was obviously meant to slow down key units in this fight as necessary because a 48 debuff to speed is huge. But at this point, the Lizardmen are starting to overrun the uh, the Vampire Coast, or Sartosa in this case. And it should be called Sartosa. They're a pretty unique faction here with those units. Makes them quite a bit different than a Vampire Coast faction in the sense that not all units can be healed and not all of them are unbreakable. There's a Kraken's pull here to try and slow down that Temple Guard. Get it all shot up. You can see these units ignoring their attackers and going after the Star Chamber Guard. And then on this flank, uh, Tehenowin's in pretty bad shape. He's uh, gotten beat up pretty badly. Here comes Salt Spite. Uh, she's a fairly quick unit. Right now she's poisoned by the Skink Skirmishers, so not going to be fast enough. She's put a Spearfisher's net on Tehenowin, obviously looking to come KO Sotex Prophet. He is one big skink. Aranessa is mostly anti-large, though. And uh, Tehenowin is also quite fast. But with the skink skirmishers poisoning Aranessa, she won't be able to catch him. So Tehenowin's going to make a pretty sly escape here. He has poison attacks as well. So Aranessa does not have any armor or shield. And she is going to suffer badly to this mass skink skirmisher fire. These zombie pirate mob need to start shooting up the skink skirmishers and Aranessa really needs to get back to safety. She is exposing herself quite badly at the moment. Over here, the infantry for the lizards does manage to survive. The vampire fleet captain is going to find himself with no support and this flank begins to crumble for the uh, Sartosan militia slash vampirate army. And Tehenowin takes his Sotex commandments <laughs> scurrying from the battlefield away from Aranessa, who is being poisoned to death and cannot catch her prey. Again, normally she is very fast on foot, but poison is going to be very effective here, and she does not have a chance of getting to Tehenowin. And some skink skirmishers are going to finish her off and force... Sartosa to admit defeat. That was a crazy battle. Two bloated corpses, one of which picked up 41 kills on an explosion. Sartosa Militia, Sartosa Free Company, mixed with Zombie Pirate Gunnery Mob, four artillery units, five if you count the Shade Wraith, and a Death Shriek Terror Geist, all up against a giant Lizardmen Rush Army. And that was a lot of Lizard Boys in that army. <laughs> you can see, it's just Tehenowin and a whole bunch of infantry. One of these uh, temple guards was very healthy at the end. I think these temple guards have to be the target of the bloated corpses. But it's tough because he's getting overrun with lizards. And uh, this is an interesting play from the lizard men. I, the vampire coast can be a tricky one. If you bring like a single entity unit model, they can be quite good at killing it because of stuff like the shade wraiths and those two carronades. And then the two mortars are good for sitting back and pummeling infantry blobs. So I really like the use of skinks here because of their speed. And then the skink skirmishers, also pretty good in this case. Again, speed and ability to put shots in the right opportunities, right? Uh, they're not great against armor. Well, guess what? The Vampire Coast doesn't typically have a lot of armor. So skink skirmishers become a pretty good pick. Saras warriors are always a good pick against the uh, the uh, Vampire Coast factions, albeit they're a little slow, but they do come shielded. Now, the Temple Guard's probably a solid pick just in case there are some large targets you can run into from Vampire Coast, so don't always just assume it's going to be a bunch of zombies and guns. It will probably be a lot of that. There may be others. The one thing that I was kind of surprised not to see is Sirens. I don't think there's a whole lot of this Lizardman army that would have been very well set up to face Sirens. They're a little more expensive though, but really curious to see Nomad bringing this army. It was a lot of fun, and then uh, GG to Backsaddle there with his Lizardman play. Fun to see them in the tournaments. Appreciate this one being sent in. I think Shetland actually sent me that replay and said that it was a lot of fun, and I agree. It was a great replay, a crazy one. So you had 
all kinds of units we don't see every day, especially in a tournament, and it was a fun battle with an exciting back and forth. Sartosa started off really laying down a hurt on the Lizardmen, and then the battle just turned as the Lizardmen continued pressing their attack, getting to the artillery pieces, shutting them down, and accomplishing what they needed to in order to win the battle. Hope you all enjoyed this one. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I will be back with more soon, and I can't wait to see you there.